Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Helen, and a warm welcome to Mustard Seed and our service today. Usually at this time of year, Edinburgh is full of festivity. There's the Christmas market, the fun fair, people are out doing last minute Christmas shopping or with their friends in pubs and restaurants. There's a vibrancy and expectation about the city in the lead up to Christmas. This year, it all feels very different. There's a sense of uncertainty and loss as the world has changed so much for all of us this year. And many of us look into an unknown future. Yet, in the long journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, where Jesus was born in poverty in the corner of a stable, followed immediately by them having to flee to Egypt because of the threat of persecution by Herod. We see the Christmas story of a struggling refugee family, a family who had little in the way of power, influence or prestige, who had little control over their circumstances or the regime under which they lived. And in this humble environment, a king was born. In our service today, Richard is going to speak about this servant king from a poor family who gave up everything to serve others. I'm really looking forward to what he has to say. Our reader today is Ian. Kate leads us in prayer and Stephen, Ali and Liz are bringing the music. I really hope you enjoy the service. No ear may hear his 
is coming, yet in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Philippians 2 verses 5 to 11 In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Well, Ian, thank you so much uh, for sharing that Bible reading with us. And the more astute amongst you will notice that's not really a very Christmassy uh, reading when you might be wanting to get into Christmas uh, mood because there's no Mary, there's no Joseph, there's no shepherds, there's no angel, there's no star or magi. But in my defence, the passage which Ian has just read to us does star at the centre of it, Jesus or well, in actual fact, this is a rather stunning poem all about Jesus. And seeing as Christmas essentially is focused on, on, on Jesus, it's not a bad place for us to dwell and look at and to listen to this passage five days out from Christmas. And maybe not having a very Christmassy passage helps us as we celebrate a quite different Christmas this year. It's going to be a much simpler one maybe. I know for many of us we're disappointed about how we're going to have to do Christmas 2020. I'm gutted that we can't have a soul food meal in, in church and, and just be celebrating uh, like that. I know for some of us we're going to have to face it on our own when we never wanted to and we might uh, not be sharing it with uh, the people we need to this year. There's going to be people missing from our table because they're going to be in different places and we just haven't been able to travel to get together and we might also uh, be having to do Christmas in a way which is very different and not a way in which we imagined. It's just become extra complicated this week as well with all the government rumours because the R rate of coronavirus is getting above one and they're, they're really getting jittery about Christmas. So God bless us as we work out how to do uh, Christmas this year, I know for our family, it's been really complicated uh, what working out what we can and can't do. And for it not to be completely settled now uh, by the from the politicians has made it uh, really hard for us to work out what the right thing to do is uh, when it comes to Christmas. And I must say, it's because of all that, it's it's hard to make Christmas a real celebration. It's been complicated 
buying presents for people we love this year or getting the car, just doing the shopping, going round a supermarket wearing a mask and it is an unpleasant experience. It's not easy to do it. Obviously, we have to do it and I'm delighted to do it if it's going to keep us safer. But but it doesn't mean it's a pleasant experience. And and also just uh, for Mustard Seed, just working out how we can do community stuff together has been really difficult there's so many rules we have to follow i get an email every week and it tells me what we can and can't do and christmas this year is hard yes uh there's going to be fun and laughter we've already had it friday uh this week was fantastic andy led such a fantastic uh quiz for us and we did laugh and we had a lot of fun so there's fun to be had but it just doesn't feel uh quite the same and yes it must be said christmas is here it might not be the Christmas we would choose or want or hope for, but it is real and it is tangible. And however we're feeling about it, it's here. And it's probably time to start to move away from the frustrations and disappointments of what Christmas 2020 uh, means to us and just reflect a bit on Jesus. Christmas essentially is a call towards Jesus. Now, often, all the razzmatazz gets in the way of Jesus at Christmas time. But this year I want to say, don't let the heaviness of these times get in the way of Christmas too. Christmas brings that eternal message that God is with us. It's called Emmanuel. God is with us. God is here. The first Christmas whispered it, but now it's part of an eternal loop, a loop that constantly beats out this message. God is with us. Unfortunately, the familiarity of God with us means it's lost its impact. But God with us is amazing. God came to us as a helpless baby, completely dependent on human parents, Mary and Joseph, to get him through. God comes as one who needs everything, humble and dependent. It's a beautiful image of how God comes. But when he comes, his presence seeps into everything. And God with us has never gone away. But it must be said, sometimes God just is not obvious because God mystifies, baffles and confounds. God cuts across a course of human history. And as he moves across that history, he beats a different beat. God's not like some great showman who comes on stage and impresses us all. God doesn't sit at the best table in a restaurant and everyone looks at uh, God and thinks, oh, I must have my selfie with that superstar. God doesn't go around dressed in the sharpest suit or with the most uh, impressive of things because God is a God who's discreet, he's concerned, he's listening, he's available. And actually God chooses to spend his time in rooms of those of us who are busted and broken, those with heartache, with nothing and no future. Yes, of course, he reaches out to everyone. His love is for everyone. But also his key desire is for everyone to know they're included, particularly those who think they're not. And Paul today sort of emphasises all of this stuff I want to say to you as he writes his beautiful poem. Um, Obviously, when he wrote this poem, he wrote it in Greek because that's what he wrote in back then. And some of the beauty is being lost in translation, but it's still absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to read to you the first few verses again, because in it, Paul offers a description of Jesus. This is a portrait of Christ. This is a portrait of of the one who we worship this Christmas. And this is a calling to us to use this as a model to base our lives on. In the message version, it says, Christ Jesus had equal status with God, but God didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. 
He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death, a crucifixion. Wow. Christ, who was everything, gave up everything. Christ, who was creator and king, chose to serve rather than having people running about, chasing after him and doing everything for him. The Christ we celebrate this Christmas became just like one of us, normal, real, ordinary. And Christ lived this normal kind of life. He could have had everything, but in fact, he just celebrated the simple. Christ, who could have gone and grasped all the power it's possible to have, Instead, like any any great person, released all that power and gave it back. And he gave it back so much so, he was even crucified. That means murdered and was treated with the hugest amount of injustice. So as humans, we tend to chase the spectacular. We love celebrity. We long perhaps for wealth, just so we don't ever have to worry about money. We dream of lives where problems just vanish and we try and escape this mundane and ordinary which Jesus seems to celebrate. We seem to, as human beings, decide, despise the darkness and difficulty in our lives. But in actual fact, Christ is chasing us and looking for us and is with us in our difficulties and he's the light in our darkness. And Christ, it seems in this passage, is inviting us to the simple way, his different way, his shout for us to be radical and to be countercultural and to be different. His call across history at all the time has been, follow me. And as we follow him, it's about being released from the futility of trying to be someone, of grasping for stuff and more and more. And instead, it's about releasing ourself instead of gaining stuff we give stuff instead of going for power we give it all away instead of winning all the time we might lose from time to time instead of trying to do it all on my own we are vulnerable and honest and say actually I need God and I need people otherwise it's not going to work what I'm talking about here has a technical name um, this God being with us of God being present deeply with us is called the incarnation and Christmas reminds us that God is deeply with us in everything about what it means to be alive it says we are not on our own it says God offers a new way and it says God asks us to put a new set of ideals into our life and it's a radical way a simple way a vulnerable way and a humble way this poem of Paul reminds us that Jesus grew up and as he grew up He showed us this eternal and important way. It's the way of love, a love so strong that it could face the worst things ever, such as crucifixion. Dying on the cross. Someone said, as you look at the incarnate son of God dying on a cross, the most powerful thought you should think is this is the true meaning of who God is. He is the God of self-giving love. And that's what I can give you this lockdown Christmas. Jesus is here and he shows God, the God of self-giving love. He that then becomes our model to be a people of love. And this is our calling of mustard seed to try and live out this self-giving love. It's really hard to do, but it's our calling. And we start with each other and our neighbours and with God and all of the people familiar to us. And then we gently let it ooze out to our friends, to Soul Food, to St. Margaret's, into our community. Just a self-giving, beautiful love. Um, It's another name for Jesus, self-giving love. It's another name for Christmas, self-giving love. You see, this is what changes the world. This is the idea 
of Jesus, which changes everything. And it's our calling and it's our calling, especially in these coronavirus times and all the times to embrace this self-giving love of Jesus and to try and let him live it out in you and you live it out in your life. You see, as this passage points out, living like this profoundly changes the world. Love wins. And this is vital. Uh, And this is what we're waiting for in Advent. Winning love. Because Jesus, after dying, rose again. And resurrection brings about all kinds of new possibilities. This is the radical world, the new world. It's now all about Jesus and his beautiful life-giving resurrection power power which is expressed through self-giving love that is jesus vision for the world and his vision for christmas so yes times are complicated at the moment they're unsatisfactory but the way of jesus doesn't change us or the way we do life the philosophy of life remains to love it might be hard this year but jesus continues to whisper I love you to all of us as we celebrate. Don't miss it this year. It's perhaps the most important of years to embrace this love and to be loved for each other. This Christmas, Mr Seed has been working very hard with other local churches, Abbey Hill, St Margaret's Meadowbank Church and Willowbray Church, just trying to connect to our local community. There were loads of things that uh, we wanted to do, but we just couldn't because the pandemic didn't let us. So the best thing we thought we could do is we could we could send a Christmas card out to 7,000 homes in our local area, make it a beautiful card and make it a card which is interactive and people could join in, in with. And in the card, we wrote, none of us expected 2020 to be the year it has been. Coronavirus has made life complicated and frustrating. As your local churches... We want to say that we are on your side and that God is with us in all of this. And we're hoping that in 2021, it will be a much more positive year. Christmas is about hope, hope for today and hope for tomorrow. And then we ask in the card, we put a star with the word hope on it. And we've asked that they would cut out uh, the star of hope and put it in the window. So hopefully around Leith and uh, Willow Bray and all the places, Abbey Hill, there'll be stars of love everywhere. Stars of hope everywhere, sorry. This is what love gets us to do. It gets us to hope. And despite everything, despite the uncertainty, despite our celebrations being so different, despite it being not exactly what we want, Christmas this year reminds us that we're part of that awesome story of love. Love, the most wonderful things, because it enables us to hope. The story of Jesus enables us to hope. The call to love brings hope. This love and hope that Jesus lived out changes the world. And it is our radical calling. Do you hear me? We've got the calling to love and it's for everyone. And this Christmas, it shouts love and hope to us all. It won't always be like this. There is so much better to come. And I hope you get a glimpse of it this year, Christmas 2020. But here's to 2021. Much love to you. God bless. Oh, go.
mind be in me and in our home. Let us have the mind of Christ. God, give us the hearts and love to put each other first, to make ourselves nothing by taking the nature of a servant. Lord, you exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To your glory, God the Father, make us less, make us like Jesus, more of you, less of me. Lord, you wait for us to come and see you. You wait to shine light where there is darkness, to show love where there is hate, to share peace where there is conflict. Lord, you wait for us to come and see you. You wait for us to remember what has been fulfilled to be prayer for what must still be done. You wait in hope and expectation, longing for us. And I pray that as the waiting for you comes to an end in celebration of your birth this Christmas, help us to shine your light, to show your love and to share your peace. Amen. And I would just like to finish with an Advent prayer as this is the last um, Sunday we will meet before we celebrate Jesus' birth on Christmas Day. So, an Advent prayer. God of light and hope, look upon us in love and fill us with the spirit of Jesus, that we may love you and serve you in your kingdom. Protect us during this week and keep us watchful in prayer as we await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, steadfast and sure. Amen. As we come to the end of our service today, 
there's a reminder to join us on Zoom at 6pm. I'd like to finish with a prayer. Lord of Light, lighten our way in the darkness of these times, that we may be a light to others on their journeys. Lord, give us the strength to endure the road ahead, that we may reach out to help and strengthen those around us. Lord, give us courage to love others as you love us. Lord, thank you that you give us hope in the poverty of a stable, the hardship of the Christmas story, and whatever our circumstances, may we find that treasure and beauty this Christmas. Thank you for joining us today.